Hi, it's Father John Roshowski uh, with another exciting episode of The Shepherd's Voice. Uh, we're here today to talk about uh, some new directives for um, distributing and receiving Holy Communion. You may wonder, well, what was wrong with the old way? Well, nothing really, but the bishops of this country, as you know, are promoting this uh, Eucharistic revival uh, so as to uh, maintain and promote uh, and increase devotion and reverence uh, for the Holy Eucharist. And so with that in mind, they've come to realize that, uh, well, maybe we, there could be some fine tuning on the way we uh, distribute and receive Holy Communion. So uh, I'm here in our St. Teresa Church, and we're gonna demonstrate a few things. We're going to talk about how to receive communion and how not to receive Holy Communion. Um, we are uh, also retraining and recertifying all of our extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, we call them EMs for short, and uh, because they have to learn a few new things. Uh, the, uh, what has happened over the years is that some of the directives uh, for receiving Holy Communion in our, in our Missal, or the Roman Missal that we use for saying Mass, uh, have um, either been uh, forgotten or maybe gotten a little, uh, a little slipshod, and so we're gonna show you now how that, how that needs to be done uh, going forward and uh, these will take effect very soon, uh, and uh, the ministers have to be uh, recertified uh, uh, by uh, the end of the year, and uh, because after that, uh, their, will, uh, their certification will expire. So, uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is um, we uh, uh, will have our extraordinary ministers, our EMs, will be com coming forward. They will come into the sanctuary, but they will come down the aisle and wait outside the sanctuary during the Lamb of God. They will not come into the sanctuary until after the priest has received communion. So uh, we have a couple of uh, people with us today uh, who are going to, we have um, Judy and Jack, who are going to uh, simulate uh, the, uh, the activities and the movements of the EMs. And uh, the number of ministers will be determined by how many uh, are required at that particular church. Uh, some of our churches, as you know, are different sizes, so we have to adjust uh, accordingly. So uh, there will be as many as six or as few as two. Right now, for our demonstration purposes today, uh, we are using just two. So, um, the, but the one who is closest to the altar will be the one who distributes the precious blood from the cup. So we're gonna show you how that is done right now. And uh, first, I'm just going to, uh, there's, uh, there's no precious blood in here right now. This is just plain wine, and you're not gonna drink it all, are you? <laughs> okay, so take this, okay. And then we have some hosts in here. By the way, these, uh, these are not consecrated. These are for demonstration purposes, okay? So, uh, and Judy will take that. Okay, so um, they will, whenever they're ready to go, they will go down to the uh, table and uh, they will do their sanitization down there. Now all of the EMs will be sanitizing at the particular station that they're going to. There will be uh, a, a material there for them to sanitize their hands. So we will still be doing that. Some churches have uh, have stopped doing this. We, uh, we have not stopped. We continue to do this because we prefer here to, as you know, to uh, exercise uh, caution, an abundance of caution. And um, so now the person with the cup will go over uh, a little further away. And so if you're going to receive from uh, the cup the precious blood, you need to be in the line that the priest, is. the priest will always be in this position. That will be center left for the congregation. Okay, and you'll be receiving here, and then you can go to receive the precious blood from the extraordinary minister who will be standing down there. There will only be, for now, there will only be one cup at each mass, and that's because we're still in the, uh, oh, in the experimental stage, and uh, we're trying to iron out the bugs. Eventually, uh, we hope to improve. Also, you know, it takes a number of extraordinary ministers to do this, and uh, so uh, we need uh, uh, to increase our numbers. So th if this is something you're interested in, it's something you would like to do for your church and for the Lord to uh, help uh, distribute communion at Mass, then please let us know. We certainly could use your help and we'll do all the training for you. So that is where uh, the extraordinary minister with the cup 
will be in relation to the priest, okay? Now, for receiving communion, we're gonna show ways to receive communion and ways to not receive communion, okay? So, um, first of all, if you were coming forward, you do a, a, a kind of a reverent bow, and, uh, but just a head bow, okay, just a head, uh, because uh, we don't wanna do a profound bow. That's really the preferred, it's just, just a slight head bow, okay, with your head. And, um, and there are some people who tend to be a little more elaborate. They want to do uh, a genuflection or something. Um, although that is acceptable, we do not advise it because it can be very dangerous to people behind you. Uh, also, um, I've had it happen, uh, not here, but at other parishes where a person has gotten down and could not get back up. And so we want to kind of avoid that problem too. Um, so remember, this is to promote reverence. Uh, it is not to promote injuries or, or accidents or, or collisions or whatever. So please be cautious with that. Um, when you receive communion, if you're going to receive in the hand, there is a way to do this. The hand must be flat. Notice, notice that the ha hand is flat. It is not curved. The fingers are not curled in, okay? And also notice that the dominant hand, you're right-handed, I assume. Mm -hmm. The dominant hand is underneath, okay? So uh, the, that is because you're creating, a, you're creating a throne for the Lord, okay? Uh, one thing you do not do, do not take it with your fingers, okay? That's a no-no, okay? The reason is because the Eucharist is a gift, and a gift is to be received graciously. It is not to be grabbed or taken. All right. Also, grabbing it with the fingers is uh, inviting uh, a, a, an accident, okay? And we don't want to do that. Okay, so the uh, communion is placed in the hand. Do not curl your hands over the one distributing communion. Do not curl your hands. There should be no contact between the one distributing and the one receiving. There should be no physical contact. There. Another thing is when you receive uh, uh, in the hand, um, make sure your hands, again, are, are together and not side by side. If the hands are side by side, that doesn't help us because we don't know where to place it, okay? Your hand. Also, it should be level, okay? Uh, I've had people with, with their hands down, way down by their knees, and then people with their hands way up here. That's very awkward for us, again, it, it's risky. So um, just, uh, just at a regular, a regular level, just like this. And then you, with your dominant hand, you take the host, and you place it into your mouth. This is after taking a couple of steps aside so that people, the next person, can come up. You must receive and consume immediately. Do not walk back to the pew with it. That's not acceptable. Do not do, as I actually had somebody do, put it in your pocket. I went after him, <laughs> and I caught him. Um, that, that is completely uh, 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 disrespectful, and we do not, um, we are not permitted to do that. So please be very cautious when you receive. Okay, now, if you're going to receive on the tongue, okay, that's acceptable too, but also you must be careful because there are sometimes people who are not aware uh, of, uh, of what they look like when they come forward. Not that we're concerned about their looks, but keep this in mind. If you're going to receive on the tongue, your tongue has to be out, okay? We don't, like that, okay? The tongue is out, okay? Now, do not just place your tongue like this. Because there's nothing we can do with this. I, I tell people all the time, if you're going to receive communion on the tongue, that's fine. But at home, pretend you're going to communion and look in the mirror to see if your tongue is out far enough. Because sometimes I have had to say to people, please place your tongue out farther, okay? So, now, see, see, that is not the way to do it, okay? So place your tongue out further. There you go, okay, see? All right, now, yes, right, and there's, there's been no contact. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, so you see how, how, uh, how it's easier for the minister or priest or deacon to give out communion uh, if, the, uh, if the tongue is placed out far enough. Do not, please, do not move 
when you're receiving. Do not move your head. Do not lunge at the host. This happens a lot. And that just invites collisions between the hand and the person's head or mouth <laughs> like that. Very good. Yes. I had, at, a, at another parish, I actually knocked a man's false teeth out. So please, so please don't do that. Don't, please stand still. Let us, let us do the work. We'll, we'll get it in there if you have your mouth open. But, but, um, but don't lunge. Um, I've also, I have three times, which is not bad for 45 years, but three times I have been bitten. Okay, so and I, I, I still have all my, all my fingers. So please, um, please be cautious about that too, because we bleed, you know, um, and we we don't want to do that. So, uh, so when uh, you're giving communion, just to receive, make sure your tongue is out. That's it, and don't place your tongue down. Some people come like this. It's hard to place the Eucharist there without it falling off. So please. And I'm very serious about this. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I doing this properly? If I were giving to communion to the person in the mirror, would it work? Would it be okay? All right? Now, in both cases, receiving in the hand or uh, receiving on the tongue, um, the, there has to be a, a, a sanitization a consideration. If there has been contact with either the hand, which is why you ask you to please not touch uh, the, the hands, um, or the, any part of the mouth, the teeth, the tongue, whatever, or lips, um, then, of course, resanitization should be done. Um, there is no need to do it otherwise. See, we have, she's dutifully, um, because she had her hand in Jack's mouth there a minute ago. So, um, so and we, uh, this is something that, that we do. There are no longer any requirements for sanitization, not from the diocese, not from the CDC, not from the Allegheny County Department of Health. This is our, uh, our, own, uh, our own guideline to, to make sure the hands, and I'm sure you're happy to know, that our hands are sanitized and we try to keep them that way. But if there has been no contact, whether it's being given in the hand or on the tongue, if there has been no contact, then there is no need to resanitize. That's the way we're going to do it. Since there are no guidelines, we are actually um, uh, more cautious than uh, you know, the, the, whatever guidelines that are in existence, which we don't know anything about. We don't know that there are any. There haven't been any um, lately. So some churches have completely, some parishes have disregarded this altogether. We're not going to do that here. We're going to continue uh, to be as, uh, as clean as possible um, because not only because of concern about COVID, but just about concern in health in general. Um, sometimes we get into a flu season or, or colds or something, and we really try to, uh, to avoid causing any problems. Yes, so. if you, make sure you're, you are giving the right signals. We look for this, by the way. We look for the person to, to give us a signal. If the hand is out like that in the proper way, then we know that they are asking to receive communion in the hand, okay? If their hands are just folded and their mouth is open and their tongue is out, that is a good cue that we're going to uh, give communion on the tongue. Please. Receiving from the cup is pretty much as has been done in the past, except that we're, we just need to add some caution uh, so that um, when you are uh, receiving that there, is no, there are no accidents and when you receive, the, uh, you, are, you are told the blood of Christ and you respond, amen. By the way, when you receive the host, you are told the body of Christ and you say, amen. We're gonna to return to that in a minute, okay? But um, when you receive the cup, make sure you receive it firmly with both hands, both hands. And then you take a sip, a small sip, and a small sip, small, <laughs> and, and then return it with both hands to the minister who received it. Make sure, make sure that there is a good, a solid exchange uh, of the cup, all right, to make sure that there are no accidents, all right? Now, uh, I said a moment ago uh, that when you receive, uh, you are to say amen. This is, this is a serious obligation. This is part of the ritual. And the reason is you're not just saying amen, you're saying amen, which means, yes, I agree with what you said. I believe it is the body of, the Christ, uh, body of Christ, I fully, or the blood of Christ. I fully, I fully agree and believe in this. And that's why it's important to say, uh, to say the amen. So you say it loud for the priest to hear, just say amen. You don't need to say anything else. You don't need to say, I believe, or thank you, or whatever. Just amen, that's all, that's the ritual. 
who ask you please follow that. You can do it enthusiastically, um, but just amen, okay? Okay, now after each person receives from the cup, um, the minister will wipe the cup where, uh, where it was received and then give a quarter turn uh, to the cup so that the next person is not receiving from the same place. Now, um, you need to know also, um, there will not be a lot of precious blood in the cup, and that's deliberate because one of the problems that we've had in encouraging the extraordinary ministers to return is that they did not want to have a lot of the precious blood left over because they have to finish it. So what is gonna happen? We're gonna use uh, much less probably than we need, which means when the precious blood runs out, it runs out, it's done, okay? So um, if you may be waiting in line and, the precious, we're, and we're gonna be um, kind of playing this by ear for a little while to know how much uh, we're going to use. But we are always going to use less than we need so that there's none left over because that must be consumed by someone and the extraordinary ministers are the ones who are supposed to receive it and some of them are just a little, uh, little nervous about that. So um, and then uh, we have also, uh, we have those who will be taking still, uh, taking communion to the home bond. You know, you often see uh, right after communion, a number of people come up to the altar, whatever church uh, we're in at the time, and they have uh, a small container called a PYX. it's P-Y-X. And the PIX is used for taking communion to the homebound or people in uh, uh, hospitals or nursing homes or whatever um, who um, are not able to join us uh, at our Eucharistic celebrations. And we have to be mindful of them. So we have a number of our ministers who will take communion to them and they come up to the altar re to receive uh, the Eucharist and we give them a prayer and then send them out. You see them leaving right away. Um, they're not to stand around and talk afterwards because they have our Lord in the picks. And so they um, go out and immediately go to uh, wherever place they're going. Some people will take just one host, some people will take eight, some people will take two dozen. Depends on where they're going and how many places they have to go and how many people they have to see. So when you see that, when you see these ministers leaving and going to take the Eucharist to those who can't be with us because of old age or illness or handicap or, or whatever reason, say a prayer for those people. Say a prayer for them uh, and that they will uh, be well and that they will hopefully be able to rejoin us here at the Eucharistic table. Um, we have a large congregation and we have uh, every week the number uh, who attend our Sunday Masses goes up slightly, and, um, it, but it's continuing. It's, it, it's been a slow but steady. And so we have um, more need for more extraordinary ministers. So if this is something you're interested in, we will be happy to train you. And uh, that's uh, coming up very soon, those training sessions. And uh, they begin on May 18th. There are three different sessions. You can just go to one uh, or the other. And um, uh, so uh, you can uh, call uh, Judy uh, at, at our liturgy office, or better yet, go on the website, and you can register there. So we ask that you uh, really consider this. This is a wonderful, serving at the Lord's altar is a wonderful ministry. And it, and, and it gives people a great deal of, of satisfaction and, and, and participation in the church. And you're really helping uh, members of our parish. So um, I think unless I've missed uh, anything, um, I, uh, this is so I thank Jack and Judy and the man behind the camera that you don't see, John Fries. And uh, that's all for now. Uh, again, thanks for listening and watching and on we merrily go.